Now for some more insight into the Irish economy, we're joined by Danny McCoy, Director General at the Irish Business and Employers Confederation. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Now, I know that you had a very interesting survey uh, that your organization released on business confidence, and I'll certainly come to that in just a moment. But if I could actually start by asking you about comments by Nobel Prize winning economist Joseph Stiglitz that uh, Europe is at risk of a double dip recession. No, I don't think that we're facing into a double dip. Um, the economy has certainly been a first mover advantage in that it went to a recession much earlier than other economies. There's been a huge amount of adjustment taking place in Irish business over the last year and a half in particular. We see costs have come back very significantly. We're seeing the export performance beginning to drive on now Ireland's share of global markets are beginning to increase significantly and in contrast to other countries in the Eurozone, Ireland was, is likely to record a balance of payment surplus this year and the domestic demand is obviously still very low because of confidence in the economy, households are saving quite significantly so the, the funds are there to uh, lead to a recovery, I think competitiveness has been restored so we'd be very confident that with the right international conditions the Irish economy will continue to record growth. You certainly are very confident. And interestingly, your latest survey showed that uh, business confidence in Ireland strengthened in the second quarter. Why are businesses more positive now? Well, I think they've been through the, the hard yards at this point. Um, as I said, the turn in the Irish economy probably started to emerge towards the end of 2007. Uh, so we're nearly two and a half years into that turn phase. Um, the businesses have reacted and the workforce has, has actually come along with businesses and made business more sustainable. We've seen very significant wage cuts in many industries which are exposed to international competition. Um, also, we've found that a lot of people have made the correct decisions now, moved up the value chain. So there's quite a significant churn in activity in the Irish economy. So there's a confidence that foreign direct investment continues to flow into Ireland, that the macroeconomic statistics are moving in the right direction. The main overhang still re is, the, is the banking crisis. We're trying to get credit moving again. And I think a lot of the international perception about Ireland is connected up to the bailout of the banks and the very significant cost of that but, imposed upon the taxpayer. But, but Danny, many analysts have said that uh, the, the restructuring of Irish banks was extremely problematic within the Eurozone. Can you with certainty rule out a double dip? Well, I think the double dip is, is really a function of what happens in the European economy. And so a lot of the confidence in the second quarter is related to the strength of the European markets. Uh, Ireland is a small, open trading economy. It's exposed significantly to the European market. And so the fortunes of Europe uh, will determine the faith of, of Ireland's growth performance in the next year. Given the fact that I said that competitiveness has been restored very significantly over the last year and a half, I think our, the Irish economy is very much poised for growth. But we're seeing yields on Irish bonds rising again. You mentioned Ireland's fate being tied to those of other European countries, ongoing concerns about those southern peripheral nations, Greece, Spain, Portugal. The markets don't seem to have a great deal of confidence in Ireland right now, do they? I think the markets are worried about the scale of the bank bailout, which is very significant, and particularly Anglo-Irish Bank. Is, um, the, the cost there are up to about $25 billion, which is up to about 14% of GDP. So it is, it is off the radar scale in contrast to other societies. But you look across it, the wealth that's built up over the Celtic Tiger period has been a 15-year phenomenon. Household savings are very high. The adjustment that's needed in the budgetary process is well underway. And so I think that you're looking at an internal adjustment now in the Irish economy, transfer between the household and the state. The external constraint for macroeconomic purposes, the balance of payments, is now very firmly moving back into a positive territory. So that macroeconomic constraint is there. The markets are still concerned, however, about the bank guarantee that comes up at the end of this month. What about I think the Irish economy is fundamental to strong. What about Danny, if I could quickly get your thoughts on, on unemployment. That, of course, a continued challenge for the Irish government with, of course, tens of thousands of workers going over overseas to find work as we saw in our previous report. What do you make of that? Absolutely. It's the biggest crisis that Ireland faces is its jobs crisis. Uh, the unemployment rate has gone to above 13.5% of the labour force in a very short period of time. Uh, what's needed now is a domestic demand boost to get households spending again. Their confidence needs to be restored right. and that is connected up to the banking crisis. So getting right. lending going to businesses, getting people oh, starting to spend Danny again, McCoy, well, thanks we so will much. avoid a jobless recovery.